What is up my fellow Andronauts? I want to share with you a shocking finding on MK7, vitamin K, MK7 on DHT. And not just this, but other electron acceptors as well. I will discuss that with you in the video exactly what it is and what you can be on the lookout for. Let's dive in. As you might or might not know, the synthesis of DHT is via 5-alpha reductase and it uses NADPH as a cofactor. So this is a very reductive process. It donates its electrons to 5-alpha reductase to convert. So it's a reductive process. An oxidation process would be when DHT converts back into testosterone, although 5-alpha reductase is obviously a non, it's a non-reversible process, so it doesn't go that way, but it's a reductive. And the DPH. All right. <clears throat> Now, let me explain exactly what an electron acceptor is. Electron acceptors increases NADP. You might have heard about coenzyme Q10 and electron transport chain. So when your body is producing energy, the food is donating hydrogens and electrons onto vitamin B2 and vitamin B3. B3 is converted into NAD. Vitamin B2 is converted into FAD. They are electron acceptors. They accept electrons from food and then they go and donate those electrons to the electron transport chain in the mitochondria to produce energy. They do basically go donate those electrons to coenzyme Q10 in the complexes of the electron transport chain. So coenzyme Q10 accepts those electrons from NAD and uh, FAD and then it passes those electrons through the electron transport chain all the way to complex 5 where ATP is being produced. Now you can see here that NADPH is converted into NADP by donating its electrons onto coenzyme Q10. The same thing with NADH, it's converted back into NAD by donating its electrons to coenzyme Q10, which allows you to have more NAD because NAD is needed for the production of energy to use in glycolysis and the Krebs cycle. So if your NAD levels are low, you're gonna to struggle to produce energy. But you need this NADH and NADPH, and I'll show you just in a moment, to create DHT and also testosterone. You need those. All right, so here is NADP inhibit 5-alpha reductase. So a product, and this is from the study, a product of a 5-alpha reductase enzyme reaction, an electron and proton carrier, NADP, inhibited 5-alpha reductase by rat prostate testosterone 5-alpha reductase, with a potency of this number right here. So NADPH is a cofactor, but NADP inhibits that enzyme. So if you use an electron acceptor that is accepting electrons from NADPH, you're creating NADP, which is thus therefore going to inhibit 5-alpha reductase. So NADP plus inhibits 5-alpha reductase by 60% when presented with NADPH. This is just another finding from the study. If you want to maximize your DHT, you want to have a lot of NADPH as a cofactor in relation to NADP. Then your 5-alpha reductase will work better. Now here are other electron acceptors because the study looked primarily at MK7 as an electron acceptor. Now other, there are others as well. So vitamin B2 and B3 as I mentioned are also electron acceptors. And they could then also potentially, when you mega dose, lower NADPH because they're taking the electrons or the NADPH is donating its electrons onto vitamin B2 and vitamin B3 or FAD and NAD. And this is why some studies have found that vitamin B2 inhibits 5-alpha reductase. It doesn't inhibit it. It's not by something like finasteride. It doesn't inhibit 5-alpha reductase, but it reduces your NADPH. So by competition, it increases NADP which inhibits 5-alpha reductase. So this is how megadosing vitamin B2 can then start to lower your DHT levels. So if you megadose vitamin B2 and vitamin B3, it might start to lower your DHT. Coenzyme Q10, but the interesting about coenzyme Q10 is, yes, it's an electron acceptor, but it works in synergy with 5-alpha reductase. So if you do not have enough coenzyme Q10, chances are your 5-AR will not work properly. So NADPH donates its electrons to coenzyme Q10, and then coenzyme Q10 goes ahead and donates its electrons onto 5-alpha reductase. So it seems to work in a synergy with NADPH and not in a negative way where it inhibits 5-alpha reductase. But I'm just listing it here because it is an electron acceptor. All right, vitamin MK4. Vitamin K2, MK4 is also an electron acceptor, works in electron transport chain, can increase NAD levels by recycling NADH back into NAD. So it's very possible to reduce NADPH into NADP. Vitamin K, MK7, methylene blue, 
uh, PQQ, which is quinone, and fumarate, which also accepts electrons. Now, quick word here on these electron acceptors. It depends where they accumulate in the cell. If they accumulate in the mitochondria, they are not close to 5-alpha reductase. So they then accept the electrons from other things, not NADPH, which is then necessary for 5-alpha reductase. So it's all about the proximity, right? If there's a lot of let's say 5-alpha reductase in the prostate, but methylen blue doesn't penetrate the prostate, it cannot inhibit 5-alpha reductase, or it cannot actually absorb the electrons from NADPH. So you also have to take into consideration, just because they are electron acceptors, doesn't mean that they will inhibit 5-alpha reductase because of the vicinity where they are located in a cell. Are they close enough to the 5-alpha reductase site to actually steal the electrons to inhibit 5-alpha reductase? Yes, no, maybe, I don't know. It all depends on how you feel when you use the compound. Another word on methylene blue is that methylene blue increases hydrogen peroxide. And hydrogen peroxide is a stimulant of 5-alpha reductase. So if methylene blue lowers NADPH, maybe to some extent, it stimulates 5-alpha reductase by increasing hydrogen peroxide. Now, some people would say that maybe they have completely crushed their libido and even get ED when they use methylene blue or too high doses of methylene blue. That could potentially be because it's lowering your DHT. It's just a possibility. So the same thing with all of these electron acceptors. I have not listed all of the electron acceptors that exist, but this is just a, a common list of things that people might use. All right, so here, as I mentioned, is the coenzyme Q10 exception. As I mentioned, NADPH donates electrons to coenzyme Q10 via the NADPH cytochrome oxido, oxido reductase and then testosterone to 5-alpha reductase. Now, so this enzyme, the NADPH cytochrome oxido reductase, is another word is called POR, right? This is the abbreviation they use for that enzyme. And you can see that POR, which is basically the uses coenzyme Q10, is a cofactor for most sterogenic enzymes, which converts pregnenolone to 17-hydroxypregnenolone, converts into DHEA, uh, converts progesterone into 17-hydroxyprogesterone, converts into androstene dione, seems to be involved in a conversion to cortisol, progesterone to aldosterone, androstene dione into estrone, not sure if it's stimulatory or inhibitory, but it seems to have a big role in multiple sterogenic enzymes here so it is beneficial to optimize your coenzyme q10 levels now i have another video on coenzyme q10 it does not increase estrogen so do not worry about that all right so this was the compounds that they looked at in the study and the lower the number the stronger the inhibitory effect is and all of these are electron acceptors so riboflavin here is one of the strongest uh, electron acceptors or inhibitors, like they say, rat prostate 5 alpha reductase inhibitor activity. So, riboflavin was one of the most potent inhibitors of 5 alpha reductase because it seems to be one of the most potent electron acceptors in this case. So, as I mentioned, all of them are electron acceptors, but some of them are just more potent than other ones. So, here you have vitamin K1, which you get from uh, plants 6.6, .6, minoquinone or MK7, which is 4. Menadion, which is MK3, which is a synthetic version that's converted into MK4 in the body, is stronger than MK7, supposedly. And there's a few other stuff that you're probably never going to use. And then riboflavin being the strongest. But as I mentioned, like it depends on how much riboflavin is actually going to accumulate in the prostate or in the area where there is 5-alpha reductase. So just because this in vitro study, it inhibits 5-alpha reductase, doesn't mean it's going to do the same thing in vivo, because it depends on where it accumulates in and what concentrations accumulates. Like a cell would regulate how much vitamin B2 it's allowing into the cell. So ultimately, it will not have the same strength of inhibition compared to this in vitro study, because they can bypass those regulatory effects. All right. So then I want to show you a couple of graphs, how important NADPH is specifically. So you can see testosterone is being converted into dihydrotestosterone with NADPH. Then you also have a DHT that is deactivated into 3-alpha or beta androstanediol, also with NADPH. And then it's converted back to DHT, so it's made stronger by NAD. So you still want to maximize your NAD levels, of course, but we also do not want to use too many electron acceptors that might deplete your NADPH. All right, so DHT can then also be converted into androstanedione with NADP, with NAD, but it's converted, activated back into DHT with NADPH. And it's converted into androsterone, which is um, very helpful for libido, also with NADPH. So the thing is, if you can maximize your NAD and NADPH, 
you will have a lot of DHT and androsterone making you feel very high libido, proper sexual function, great bonies, like all of the good stuff. Feeling really alpha because your DHT will be high when your NAD and NADPH is in a really optimal spot. Then in terms of regular sterogenesis, all of these enzymes uses NADH as a cofactor to activate them, right? NADPH. So we have this 17 beta hydroxysteroid dehydrogenase 1, 2, 4, 3, 5, Anyway, all the way up to, it seemed to be 14. So one activates, one, three, five, and 15 activates. It makes things stronger. Whereas two, four, 10, nine deactivates. So a high level of NAD deactivates. A high level of NADPH activates. So when you use a lot of electron acceptors, you're going to deactivate your potent androgens like testosterone back into androstenedione, which is a very weak androgen. DHT is going to be deactivated into anastinedione, which is a much weaker androgen than DHT. So therefore, you do not want to deplete your NADPH. So this is why me and a couple of andronauts on Tesotribe have actually noticed when they use too much neosinamide or too much vitamin K2, we actually get a drop in testosterone. And this could be because you're lowering your NADPH and that is leading to a deactivation of your androgens. Not a good thing. All right, so I hope I made clear how important it is not to overdo these electron acceptors. Otherwise, you can start to lower your testosterone DHT. All right, so the point here is not to fear monger you guys into never using any of these electron acceptors again. I'm just trying to bring caution to mega dosing stuff. Right, from all of my experiments that I've learned so far is that Mega dosing is not always the best way to go about testosterone maximization. You backfire many times. But my experiments have not been a complete waste of time because now I've actually learned what might have been too much of a high dose for humans and what works and what doesn't. So even if the thing is a failure, you st still learn something. So if you want to be a part of my experiments, join Tesla Tribe. Everything is going on there. All of the experiments on how to maximize testosterone. Like we're all doing it together. So if you want to maximize your testosterone, Get on the Tesla Tribe and let's maximize your testosterone. Also, you will get all of my courses on testosterone, DHT, estrogen, prolactin, dopamine, norepinephrine, all of the good stuff is on there. So if you want to maximize your testosterone, join us on there. All right, guys, so I hope you learned something new. And as I mentioned, I hope I didn't fear monger you. Don't stay away from these supplements or foods, obviously. Just don't mega dose them, which could then backfire and have negative results. All right, guys, I will check you in the next one. Cheers. Thank <laughs> you.